Hey fellow indoor golfers, on this edition of Gerald's Corner, we're gonna talk about the new SkyTrack Beta 4.0 software update. So I just wanna show you where I found this to start with. Um, you know, I, I Googled SkyTrack version 4.0 or SkyTrack beta. And so it brought me to the simulator forum where they had it there and it's like, hey guys, try this out. So here are your updates as far as this goes. We've got improved range graphics, improved tracers, improved camera views, limited support characters and profile names, restricted altitude and temperature to realistic values. So your buddy's not gonna tell you they're hitting their six iron 250 because they've got it set on 25,000 feet, no humidity and uh, 150 degrees or something. Fixed duplicate club bug and bag management, tongue twister. Fixed bag mapping bug in offline mode miscellaneous bug fixes and improvement. So those are the things that they updated in it. When we click on it, you're gonna log in just like you normally would once you get it downloaded. For right now, we're just gonna go to practice mode. And what I'll go do right now is just kind of walk you through and show you the big differences on things. You know, upper right hand corner is your control button, essentially your control center where you can see your shot history, numeric display, shot optimizer. And for right now, we're gonna to go to session settings. And what they've done is they've taken the dispersion circles from shot history view and they've taken in the dispersion circles and put them here. So you can toggle that on and off if you want. And then your camera angles, all that kind of stuff, your shot tracers, how many shots you wanna have, 550 or just one. The other new thing is the graphics. You know, you can change your graphics to low, medium, high, maximum, whatever you wanna do as far as that stuff goes. You can go ahead and change that. I'm gonna leave it on maximum for now. Actually, let's try this. Let's put it on low just so we can get a look of it, at it and see what's going on. And I'm gonna hit some shots on this to see if that helps with the delay at all. But uh, other things in here, just so you know, in case you haven't gone in here before, you know, your distance, you can either select carry your total, your shot dispersion, carry your total, you know, in case you do spin the ball a little bit, your dominant hand, obviously, if you're right or left-handed, and then your ball spin, you can either put it on the spin axis and that'll give you a degree of yaw or your side spin, it'll give you a raw number. And then that's where you change course conditions, wind blowing, what direction it's coming from. Depends on where you live, I guess, if you want to practice into the wind, if you have a prevailing wind, wind speed, humidity, altitude. So if you live in Texas, you're going to go play golf in Colorado. Obviously, you're going to want to drop that humidity and jump up the altitude just to give you a better sense of what the ball's going to do when you are in Colorado. So that's a good thing to practice. The shot optimizer and the numeric display don't really matter for us yet because I haven't in any shots and same with the shot history. But this is also where you exit your session when you get done, just so you know, in your control panel. The other thing I think a lot of people miss is the practice area settings. So if you go to the left, middle left, you've got your practice area with the wheel. If you click on that, you can select greens. Easy green, medium green, hard green. So easy is big, hard is small, and you just pick the green you wanna look at. So I think I'm gonna hit some wedges today, so we'll pick this hard green, the number eight section there. And I'm gonna go down and change my distance to 100 yards. My finger's a little cold, we'll have to leave it at 101. And then you can also see on the left, it'll give you how many times you hit the green, how many times you missed the green, your accuracy percentage, all that stuff. So it's good data. All right, so big things with the SkyTrack when you are gonna hit it, you've got the logo of the ball. You have to make sure that faces the SkyTrack when you hit. That will help catch the spin and stuff like that on it as well. We'll go to maximum. Right now we're on low. Let's go to maximum and see if I can actually see a difference. Got a little bit different. Trees got a little thicker. Sky got a little clearer. Cool to have. All right, let's hit a couple more so we can see some data. All right, 100% accuracy on the green. You can also see there's a little tiny shot circle there. So with that shot circle, you can see that little strip. I'm gonna hit one more shot for you so we can get a better idea on that dispersion circle. But I like that factor that they put that up there now that they added that to it. That's kind of a cool little feature. All right, so one more shot just to get it so you can see the difference in that dispersion circle. I'll hit it a little bit longer. 
just to get an idea of where that, how that circle comes out. Cause right now it's just that little tiny strip. But now we have a big circle on there. That's a really cool feature. And with that big circle now gives you a better idea kind of how your shots are getting created. Four for four, I'll take that all day. 100 yard sand wedge, I should be 100% on the green, right? But there's your overview. Not a bunch of dramatic changes, but it looks a little bit better. You don't have the mountains. You know, we'll put up a picture in picture for you so you can see the old version. But I suppose I could, I need to define a club to get some of the shot history stuff. So let's do that. We'll hit one more shot. I wanna show you that stuff as well. Might be my first actual miss of the green. Well, I'll still hit it. So when we go to shot history, there's all your data. It gives you your launch angles, your spin rates, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of cool to have. You can export that if you want to send it to a coach or something. You can do some shot plotting. So we'll select all on that. And this will give you just where your shot patterns were, right? So how consistent you are, stuff like that. If I had more of the red lines with the 56 being detected, it would have that up there. If you go to your numeric display, it'll show you your last shot and give you a breakdown with graphics, which is kind of really cool, actually. I, I, I like that a lot. And then your shot optimizer is cool because it'll tell you what your optimum ranges are. So you can see I have two yellows as far as the color goes. My spin was good enough. I launched that a little low because it is more of like a three quarter 56 for me. So it's not going to be a high shot. It's something I hit when I'm when it's windy and I'm controlling it. So the descent angle and the launch angle are both gonna be a little bit low on that, but I'll take that. That's kind of the planned shot. But these are cool things that you can look through and just get an idea of how all this stuff works. The in session settings, if you wanna change your camera angle, you got five different camera angles you can look at. If you wanna see those, we can see those. We can look through and see the, there's your first person view. It doesn't really move. It just shows you the ball flight. Me personally, I like to follow it. So I do the follow ball. The dynamic one is actually kind of cool as well because it'll start out in first person and then it'll flip over and kind of come to a side view of it. So that's pretty cool because you get to see how the ball reacts when it hits the green. And then you've got your 45 degree. Just hit replay again one more time. Shows it from the side view all the way. And then the last one will be the downrange view. Downrange just flips it over from the flag, the bird's eye view from the flag. See how that ball comes in. So more like you'd see on TV when you're watching golf. Again, for me, I like to follow cam, but that is it. So if you like what you've seen today, obviously you can like and subscribe, comment down below, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or always go to shopindoorgolf.com. Give us a call, send us an email to sales at shopindoorgolf.com if you have any questions. Have a great day.